Hello YouTubers, kind of a, a midday video for you rather than a late night one. Forgive the uh, wounds on my face. And uh, I am sitting here with my guitar. Uh, partially because I've actually gotten... I, I, I downloaded that, that BBS documentary. It's eight episodes about, you know, uh, BBSing back in, you know, the, the 70s and 80s and, and kind of into the early 90s, and if you guys watched my three-parter, Enchanted Forest, um, you'd know that me and my brother and my dad and several friends of ours from our area were kind of into all that. And, uh, you know, one thing I'm noticing about all, all the interviews with these BBS, these old BBS guys is like, no kidding, like 10% of them play guitar. Uh, maybe 20%, like there's always like, like guitars in the back of their, uh, um, you know, you know, in their interviews, or somebody's got a rack sitting there with like a bunch of basses and acoustics on it, or something like that, and a couple of them are drummers and and everything. Uh, so I just thought it'd be fitting to kind of, you know, uh, sit here and do the video with my guitar, even though you can't really see it. Um, this strap is my mom's original guitar strap from her acoustic in the '70s, by the way. Uh, I don't know how. It's my brother's instrument. I'm not sure how he got this strap, but I hope he hangs on to it when I give him the guitar back. Um, it's just been really cool uh, watching this um, uh, watching this documentary because it's, it's kind of started to bring back a lot, you know. Um, I think a lot of younger people just sort of um, take for granted uh, what it used to be like to get online, you know? Uh, you know, one guy describes it as, uh, imagine all your aim contacts are gone, or, or all your messenger contacts are gone, and there's no email either. So, like, back in the days of bulletin boarding, it, it could, like, literally take months, like, months to have a conversation. Um, you know, you get on the BBS, you leave your little message, and then maybe, maybe within hours you might have a reply, but it could literally be weeks or months down the line before anybody replied to that message. And, and there was a There was a real uh, kind of interesting sort of aspect to that um, that um, might be kind of hard for some people to understand. I know there are forums and stuff now, so um, you know, sometimes those take a while to uh, get a response or Yahoo Answers or something like that. So I guess there are some, some similarities. But, uh, you know, at the same time, it's just, it's just not quite the same. So, you know, a lot of the younger crowd out there just may not, you know, may take that kind of thing for granted. And then baud rates, you know, going from 300 to eventually 14.4. Um, 14.4 and, and, uh... 56k modems were more in the uh, the internet days, but 300, 1200, 2400, 2800 baud modems um, were uh, <laughs> they, they were they were like a 300 baud modem was like so slow, like just watching everything come out on the screen. Uh, that girl that I mentioned meeting uh, through a bulletin board. I uh, talked to her recently, and she she uh, referred to herself as a twenty eight hundred baud hussy, <laughs> which I thought was kind of amusing. Uh, I'm not gonna you put her name out there or anything like that. Um, we're not on good terms, so I could, but I'm just not that kind of dude. So um, some of you <laughs> from from the old days probably know who I'm talking about anyway. Uh, and 
the other cool thing has been sort of uh, just seeing, you know, all the the old tech these guys are pulling out, like Altairs and like old Commodores and you know Atari. Uh, you know, I, I forgot about the whole Atari uh, computer thing that was around for a while. They were kind of the Commodore's competition. You know, like Apple IIs and, and original Macs and Lisas and, uh, you know, I haven't seen too many IBMs yet. But it's kind of sad because a lot of these guys will be sort of like digging through a box and it's like, what's he, you know, what's he, what's he going for? What's he trying to get in there, you know? And, uh, you know, eventually he kind of pulls out, he kind of pulls out this, uh, this old, you know, beige and other beige colored box. And he's like, yeah, this is the old whatever, whatever bulletin board. It's like an old Apple II or something like that. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's original configuration, uh, you know, all these disk drives and this, that, and the other. So, you know, it's about like it was when I, um, uh, you know, uh, actually took it offline. And, uh, you know, he looks at it a little closer and like, oh, there's discs in the drive. And he pulls the disc out and he's like, well, there's the loading disc for the DVS. So, like, it, it, it's literally like it, like it was. And they'll be like, uh, yeah, how many years ago, or how long ago was it that you last saw that? And then he starts thinking, um, hmm, out of the box, you mean? Well, um, this box is to a monitor I bought about ten years ago. Which actually doesn't seem like that long. And then, I, I mentioned that friend of mine, Jeremiah, who, uh, who doesn't like throwing things away. And, uh, a lot of these old BBS guys are just like that. There's this one guy who still has all his floppy disks. Like, all of his five and a quarter and some three and a half. But all of his five and a quarter floppy disks from that, that are full of shareware from you know ten, twenty, you know, fifteen years ago, and he's like, you know, uh, all of these disks actually fit on two CDs. I've already put them on two CDs, and it's like, dude, you, you literally had to buy a house with a basement or a bigger house to to store all this stuff. There was some point, kind of, for me, when I got back from China, I think it was, where I just kind of decided, you know, I need to trim the fat out of my life, you know, literally and, and figuratively. And I went as far as uh, uh, just getting rid of all the cases that my DVDs came in, like literally. Like, I, I took all my DVDs out of the case put them in a little binder and just recycled the cases. Except for one or two, like Boondock Saints had that real cool looking case. And you know, lo and behold, nobody even like buys DVDs really anymore. Everybody just sort of downloads stuff. So, you know, I don't even, I think that binder of DVDs is with my parents. I don't even, you know, you know, I want something, I just go find it. Uh, but it really has been cool to sort of see these guys, you know, bring, you know, talk about all this older stuff and just kind of remembering what it was like to, to sort of, uh, you know, be online, you know, back in the day. And, uh, you know, another thing they bring up was the phone charges. Like you literally, like the phone book was your best friend back then because it told you what numbers were local to you to call. And, uh, you know, if you needed to call a board that was, that was sort of out of your area, it gave you an idea of when it'd be cheaper to do so. And, uh, you probably only want to do that if they had a piece of software that you really, really needed. Uh, because you'd have to debate, like, this is a big piece of software. It could take a 300 baht or whatever. It could take hours to download. And, you know, it's going to be like, there are people who, who back in the day would get like, you know, like, uh, like $600 phone bills, $650 phone bills every month because they're, they're, uh, 
you know, they're calling all these boards that are that aren't local. Which, you know, ideally to meet, you know, a lot of new people would be kind of um, what you'd want to do. Um, so, you know, they were kind of, kind of living in the spirit of the whole thing, but, you know, at kind of a, a high cost. And then, you know, another thing kind of pointed out in the documentary is that computing was just way more expensive back then. I mean, uh, there's this one guy who worked for a school system and he kind of talked about how oh, uh, the first hard drive they bought was from Radio Shack and it was five megabytes and it cost like three thousand dollars. Or uh, a guy who, who bought a couple of drives that were similar to that and was leaving the store going, you know, I could have just bought a car for this 10 megs of storage uh, or whatever. I remember that, that was back in the days of MFM. So MFM, IDE, and then SATA. Uh, and now, like, eSATA uh, has kind of come about. So, uh, you know, again, I just want to reiterate, it's been very cool to be kind of alive at the right time to see the entire kind of gamut of, uh, of personal computing. Now, it kind of started more or less like when I was born, like late 70s, you know. And as early as like 72, there was some like online stuff, you know, happening in the science circles with, with computers, but... You know, I, I've been around kind of the whole, the whole time, and and it's it's been uh, it's been a real trip, uh, and and I, I've really enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, if you're into computing and you've not seen BBS the documentary, I recommend that you find it. It's eight parts, um, well worth it. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, definitely check it out. Uh, it's not too often that I do one part videos these days, uh, but you know, I don't think I need another one for this one. So I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, just leave this one as is nice and uh, short. Well, you know, like 13 minutes. Uh, anyway, a virus virus database has been updated. Speaking of computers, there's my virus definitions, which I guess you just heard. Um, anyway, uh, going on and signing off again.